Bonjour, hello and welcome to your new wine video. I'm your host Julien Michel and today we are going to be talking about the basic principles of decanting wine, when to do it and how to do it. So decanting wine is one of those gestures that you see wine professionals and sommeliers and wine connoisseurs do, but that can be a little intimidating. It can be a little daunting to know when to decant a wine, which wines you should decant and how to do it, right? In fact, decanting wine doesn't have to be all that complicated. The theory of it can be simplified and summarized into just a few simple rules. In reality, most wine consumers, even average wine consumers, could improve greatly their tasting experiences by decanting their wine a little more often. So here I gathered a few rules of thumb to help you understand what decanting does to your wine and how to do it properly. As always, to keep things simple, I've broken things down into four small chapters that are digestible for you. And let's start with the first one, why decanting wine. My fellow wine loving friends, Julian here. Before we get started with the video, there is something that you have to know about. This video was made possible by the Bonner Private Wine Partnership and the reason I work with them is not just because it's been called the most unique wine club in America, but because they truly love the wines that they choose for you. Founded by Will Bonner, the partnership is a small group of wine lovers who have come together to import excellent small batch wines that might otherwise get completely overlooked by large importers. They get them. Right now you can get your hands on three rare extreme altitude red wines from Argentina from some of the purest, highest vineyards in the entire world, way up in the Andes mountains. No middlemen, no additive packed supermarket wines here, no inflated costs. Plus you'll get exclusive access to more wine education videos from me, just like the one you're about to watch, to make sure you become an educated wine connoisseur. So make sure to check out the link in the video description to see if you want to become partner in something truly special in the world of wine. But for now, back to your video. So decanting wine has two main functions. And the first one is to aerate the wine or introduce some oxygen back into the wine. A little bit like when you pour a glass of wine, the wine gets in contact with the air, with the oxygen in the air. And you would have noticed that sometimes when you pour a wine during a dinner, the wine evolves all the way through the dinner and doesn't taste or smell exactly the same way at the beginning of the meal or at the end. Or you would have noticed that if you leave some wine, a bottle of wine open for the next day, it's going to change completely. And that's due to the presence and the action of oxygen on the wine. So wine, and you've probably heard this, is a beverage that is full of antioxidants. And this is particularly true for red wines that are full of what we call tannins. You know, those molecules that give you a drying finish, a drying sensation on the palate and that give a lot of this dark color uh, to red wines. Those tannins love absorbing a lot of oxygen. And because we seal obviously our bottles of wine generally under cork, and because of these antioxidants, the aromas, which are other molecules that are found in the wine, get somewhat asphyxiated from the lack of oxygen inside the bottle. And they become a bit shy, a bit introvert, they lose their natural fragrance, uh, the exuberance of their expression, the fruitiness, the spices and the herbs get tamed and tamed down by the lack of oxygen inside the bottle. So introducing some oxygen brings back the natural chemical form of the aromas into the wine and the natural fragrance and expression of uh, grapes and uh, fermented grape juice. The second function of decanting wine is to eliminate the sediments that may have formed particularly in older wines at the bottom of the bottle. And we will see this when I decant a bit later on this bottle of 1991 Burgundy Pinot Noir wine. Sometimes wine is not a perfectly stable uh, solution. Some say that it's almost like a living uh, thing. 
because it's not perfectly stable, at least the good wines are not perfectly clean and perfectly stable, some of the tannins and a bit of the acids uh, into the wine tend to precipitate, get a bit bigger, form crystals that fall down at the bottom of the wine. So we want to eliminate them before pouring them. So we eliminate as we decant into the decanter and we will see this in a minute. So this tells us why we decant wine, but the whole important question is also which wines should we decant or not? Decanting is mostly relevant for red wines and you would have noticed that I only have red wines here, but which should you decant or not? Generally speaking, the bright, crisp, fruity and light Reds, and especially the young ones, do not benefit so much from being decanted because they don't have as many antioxidants and as much power into them that needs to be liberated. So those would be the Pinot Noirs or the Beaujolais and also some of the most affordable ones. Don't worry about decanting them, they're already quite vibrant and fruity as soon as you open the bottle. The young reds, but the ones that are very dense and rich, just like this one, full of tannins and antioxidants. The ones made from Cabernet Sauvignons, the Merlots, the Malbecs, the big bodied, richly bodied wines. Those, even if they're young, can benefit from decanting to give them a bit more aeration and liberate all the power and the fruitiness of their aromas. But decanting is going to be even more beneficial for the very old or the older reds because they have been trapped inside the bottle for a long time so the aromas have gotten really shy and asphyxiated and it's going to take much longer, much more oxygen to liberate all the potential of their aromatic expression. While I talk only about reds here, some whites, some old white wines like old Chardonnays for example, or old Sauterne wines, sweet dessert wines, old ports as well, may benefit from being decanted but with a bit more caution. Some go as far as decanting champagne, old vintage champagne wines as well. This leads us to another very important question. When should you decant your wine or how long before pouring the wine you should decant it? In absolute, I shouldn't be telling you that there is one right moment to decant a wine that would work for every one of them. Every wine is different depending on its age, depending on its origin, the grape variety, as we've seen, depending on its tanning concentration. But that's exactly where I think a lot of people get confused and they end up not decanting any of their wines. Generally speaking, most of the wines we've talked about benefit from half an hour of a decanting time and aeration time prior to serving. The problem is if you decant too early, that oxygen that initially liberates the aroma may start destroying them and destroying the qualities and degrading the qualities of your wine. If you decant too late, the oxygen won't have time to react and interact with the wine so it won't have such a beneficial effect. Half an hour, generally speaking, works on virtually every wine. But of course, if you really know a specific wine, you have several bottles of it, you have a case of it, and you are really used to enjoying it on a regular basis, next time you taste it, time, how long it takes it to really open up and to really shine through and reach its peak of aromatic expression and this is always going to be your best decanting time more than the half an hour thumb rule that I've just given you. But let's move on to how do we practically decant a wine. You said Julian that it's easy, let's see how it's done. So if you have a young wine just like this one, it is likely not to have any deposit uh, at the bottom of it, so you don't need to worry too much about it. Just take your decanter and pour your wine into it. You do want to aerate it uh, in the process, which is going to help it breathe and aerate much, much better. But otherwise, there's not a whole lot to it. At the very end, maybe pay attention to make sure there isn't actually any deposit into it. And that's about it. Just leave it rest for half an hour and then it's ready for enjoyment. But if you have an older wine, 
it is much more likely to have some deposit at the bottom and that's when you want to pay a little bit more attention attention that what i've been doing just before so you want to have a bright source of light a lot of uh, lighting some people even use a candle or a torch the idea is that you want to be able to see uh, the wine as as you pour it but before this i should definitely emphasize on the fact that you want to leave your bottle standing for at least one hour before decanting the wine to allow all the deposits to fall down the bottom. If you do have one of those uh, basket cradle that the sommeliers use, you can also use that, but you really want to make sure that all the deposit hasn't been shaken. You don't want to shake the bottle around uh, before decanting. Make sure everything has fallen down the bottom so you get as a minimum waste as possible once this is done you simply start pouring your wine and pay close 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 attention to the wine that is coming out of the bottle and keep pouring keep pouring as long as the wine is clear it is still very clear here so i can still keep going keep going essentially you want to leave the deposits in the bot in the bottle so you should start at some point the wine getting a little bit hazy and that's when you want to stop pouring. Here we go. It is becoming a little bit hazy. There's actually not a whole lot of deposit in here, but I can see that now there is a bit of depositing. So I've probably lost half a glass here, but at least my wine in my decanter is now perfectly fine for enjoyment so if I pour this wine now it's now perfectly clear in my glass of wine it does have a bit of a brownish color because this is a 30 year old wine after all but it's now perfect for enjoyment I should say that I should wait for half an hour or so before really enjoying it And this is it really, there's not much more to it really. Now in half an hour, we are going to have a wine that is much, much more expressive. I hope this has helped demystifying what is decanting. I hope this has explained how much of a gain you can have from what is at the end of the day, a relatively simple gesture, but that is going definitely going to make a difference through your tasting experiences if you are wondering about the different types of decanters that i've got here about the different shapes i would say and advise that at the end of the day they're all relatively similar in terms of the surface of contact and they do all do generally speaking a great job at aerating the wine so i would advise just pick one that you like in terms of the shape and also think about one that you're not gonna mind cleaning they can be a little bit tricky to get into and get really clean so maybe think about this when you choose your decanter that was me for today i hope you enjoyed this video and i will see you soon in the next one au revoir cheers